culture is. I don't care what the religion is. I don't care what the color is. And I made a lot of trips for the president after the flight. What I found is that people everywhere are the same. If I meet an individual, he could become my friend. And everybody's the same. I don't care where they are or what language they speak. People to people are still people. And they can get along. That's the way I see people. I don't, I don't judge people. I went around the moon 75 times. Every time I came around the backside of the moon, I watched the Earth rise. Uh, that was uh, uh, probably the most important part of the flight for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I worked out a set of a one sentence saying in 20 different languages, Hello Earth, greetings from Endeavor. And every time I came around the side of the moon, I said that, either in Arabic or Indian or Japanese or, or whatever. Uh, 75 times we saw the Earth rise. What's interesting to me is we went really to find out all we could about the moon, but what we really did was look back at the Earth. Uh, from a couple hundred thousand miles away, it's a very different thing than it is up close. My view of the universe, uh, there's a portion of the orbit around the moon where I was shadowed from both the sun and the Earth. Complete absence of light except for starlight. Starlight was so intense and so many of them that it, I could not pick out a star. It was a, it was a sheet of light. I could very accurately see the horizon of the moon based on the light that was cut off. Uh, we calculated afterwards that I could see 10 to the 6th times as many stars as we could see through the atmosphere here. We, and it caused me to do, a little, to, to do a little studying on that. We are a minor sun out on, a, on one of the limbs of the Milky Way galaxy, about two-thirds of the way out. Um, there are, in the Milky Way galaxy, some 400 billion stars. And you look beyond that, and you find out that there are some 200 billion galaxies out there. And you begin to wonder, what is this all about? I mean, we just don't know a drop compared to what's out there. We One in six people in the UK suffer from a common mental disorder, such as depression or anxiety, and that rate is increasing. How and why the gut microbiome are involved is only recently being investigated. And they took some bacteria from people with depression, and then they put them into rats to see whether the rats then developed depression. Um, during depression, people are anhedonic. They don't get pleasure from eating interesting foods. And the rats um, that had been had a de um, microbiome from somebody with depression ate less sugar. And secondly, when they were given a maze to run around in, they didn't want to go upstairs in the maze. They always stayed on the ground floor of the maze because they had less confidence. So it does sound really like the microbiome might be involved. I would say that some probiotics and some prebiotics can help some people with some diseases. What a vague um, conclusion to make, but I'm afraid that's where the science is at the moment. It is possible the universe is not eternal, at least not eternal toward the past. It should bug you a little bit to imagine the universe is finite in age in one direction toward the past, but infinite toward the other direction toward the future. But maybe that's what it is. The universe bugs us all the time. That's not really a, a principled objection to what is going on. The real weirdness here is that time isn't fundamental. It's a weird way of thinking about how physics works, to imagine that time itself is just a good approximation rather than something that is built into the equation. But maybe that's how things go. So I wanted to end by going back to the pretty picture, not just because it's a pretty picture, uh, but because it reminds us of where we are and where we're going. Over and over again in the talk, I said things like, you know, maybe, I don't know, it's possible. And you could easily get the idea that progress is slow. And you know, progress in some sense is slow on human being time scale, in some sense. But think about this picture. Think about it not only to the extent that we live in a gigantic universe, which is hard to understand, but to the extent that we do understand so much of it that we didn't understand before. Okay? We look at this picture and we say, oh yes, galaxies, etc. A hundred years ago, we didn't know there were other galaxies. We didn't know that these things had billions of stars in them. We didn't know the universe was expanding. We didn't know there was a Big Bang. We didn't know there was dark matter or dark energy. We didn't know any of those things. 
we figure them out and now we take them for granted. Now we get to look at these pictures and contemplate the vastness of the cosmos through data, not through just our imaginations. The stuff I've been talking about today has all been imagination-based. But a hundred years from now, I'm very optimistic that we will have turned these ideas to concrete, testable predictions for where our universe actually came from. Thank you. Yes, people say, what's the hardest thing about going to space? Is it's probably the two and a half years before going to space of bouncing around the world, training in Japan and Canada and Europe and Russia and America. Um, but it's fantastic because it's just this global space community that seems to be able to rise above the political tensions in various countries. Throughout the whole of my training, we had the, the Crimea crisis going on. And people were saying, is this going to affect your space flight? Are the Russians still going to fly you to space? Of course they are. You know, we, we have these programs that are going on that are far more important. And the international collaboration and cooperation is far more important. It's achieving something greater than any one nation can achieve by themselves. And that's the beauty, I think, of, of space exploration as a model for international cooperation, collaboration. And we're seeing that now with the Moon and with Mars. You know, we're seeing all the nations come together. I think the human race has always been exploring and we need to continue to go further and further. We need to have a good mixture of people. So I take people with experience of a whole load of different things, different types of people, people who are interested in different things, people who are interesting. Yes. What would I look forward to? And it would be the sensations of being there. So that combination of weightlessness, um, of actually having those views out of the window. If I went to Mars to, to crunch the rocks beneath my feet. So it's kind of all the sensations that come that tell me where I would actually be. The amazing experience in your life, you have changed. Regardless of what you have seen, you have changed in yourself. And you can never go back and be that same person again. For better or worse, you're different. I think was, so I did my training, it was kind of international training, a bit like Tim's in one way, except there was the British mission, followed by the Austrian mission, followed by the German mission. So we kind of had parties at the weekend, <laughs> and we had all these people from all over the world, and the Russians were joining with us, and we just had a fabulous time in the training. This connection between uh, mathematics and music. shapes and with very just the odd little instruction I could change this musical shape musical object into something else <laughs> that um, in a mathematical proof you need to feel like every step yeah, of course that naturally follows from what I've just heard, but I, I've moved and I've changed. And I think when you listen to a piece of music, you sort of uh, want that feeling of, yes, I, I, I see how that's grown out of what I've just heard, but it's evolving and changing. And I think... Example, you know, when you first hear um, the height to the Beethoven, how are you going to get there? In eleven moves, but each move seems to make sense, and but by the end, you've got somewhere completely different. So.